Sparring Cat here, and in today's Battle Cats video, I'm ranking all of the units in the game that you will get in the beginning, and I'll be ranking them from a D tier up to an S tier. And these are units that you'll get in the beginning of the game, so some of your normals, some rares, some special super rares, uber sets, everything like that. I'm going to cover all of it, and no matter where you are in the game, this video can help you because it will show you which units are good, which ones are bad, when they'll fall off, when they're good, who they're good against, who they're bad against, so on and so forth. But if you guys enjoy the video, please consider liking, subscribing, and, and turn on, turning notifications on because it all helps the channel. And it's what allows me to make videos and do what I like to do to help you guys. So starting off the list, right, we have Gross Cat. And I'm going to give Gross Cat a C+. Plus. He is good against the aliens and in, into the future when you get his true form, and that's definitely a plus. And there are some examples of him being really good against enemies in early game, like hippos and stuff. But he gets outclassed by Ubers eventually. And a C plus, he's not a bad unit. He's doing his job. I think his biggest problem is probably single target. You know, if he had area attack, he'd be really good. And eventually, when crazed macho legs and stuff come along then he does lose some usage but you know what i actually feel like moving him over to a b tier same reasons and everything just uh moving him up ranking after that we have fish cat and fish cat is going to be a c tier he is like the version the crazed version of himself but the stats are not as good he's more expensive he's slower and he has a critical hit, which is useless. And I still think he's good in some situations, but he definitely gets outclassed by his manic, his uh, his manic variant. So I'm gonna leave him there at a C tier. Not awful, but there are definitely better units in the game to be using. Bahamut Cat, and I didn't go too much further than Bahamut Cat for this list because, you know, Bahamut won't be your very first unit, but early enough into the game where I kind of draw the line there. But in terms of Bahamut Cat, his first two forms will probably get like a B plus. But when you get his true form, it's an easy S here. So balancing all that out, I'm going to give him an A. And you could still argue that his first two forms are A tiers. I think they're B tiers. They're not very consistent, but they're good enough to the point where even if he's streaky, he could do a lot. So I think his first two forms deserve a B tier, and his true form is a no doubt S tier. And as I was saying before, no matter what part in the game you are in, this could also be seen as a general ranking as well. So anybody can benefit from knowing that Bahamut Cat is a great unit. And yeah, I think he's an A tier all around. Obviously S tier in the last form, but you know his inconsistencies stem from his 20 seconds in between attacks long attack animation and overall even though he has the capabilities of a nuker he still only has about 4,000 dps which is better when you consider that he has 450 range but definitely keep that in mind that <clears throat> it takes him a long time in between attacks to generate that attack after that we have here we have cat gunswinger and oops, cat gunswinger is himself a pretty irrelevant unit but his true form which i don't have here very good at slowing down relics and you'll see he's a game changer there so in the beginning of the game which this is a list for beginning he's a c but keep in mind young players that when you eventually get to uncanny legends if you don't quit the game if you get to uncanny legends then he should be one of your first upgrades probably behind I don't know. Um, slapsticks. Maybe. Yeah. You're run units like that. You know, they could put your relic cat fruit towards. But Cat Gunswinger, True Form, Uncanny Legends, definitely a good buy. His capabilities against. I forgot what trait he's against, but his capabilities against his niche are not very great. He's not very powerful against them. And yeah, after that, we have these beans and these beans here 
are probably going to get a D tier. They are pretty much useless. Even in early game, you shouldn't use them. I would recommend Pirate Cat, who's going to be coming in later in this list, as a great replacement and far better than Bean Cats. Bean Cats really don't have much usage. There might be a cat combo or two you'll use them for, maybe. But yeah, they're really close to useless. Bird Cat is going to go on that same tier. Bird Cat, I have not heard many people say that Bird Cat is an amazing unit. And don't confuse Bird Cat for its little counterpart because Little Bird Cat is a great anti zombie unit, but Bird Cat is not great at anything. Uh, very low range, stats aren't that great, kind of expensive for what's supposed to be a spammable unit, and he just doesn't live up to the hype if there was any hype around him. After that, we have Swordsman Cat, and Swordsman Cat. You know, I'm going to give him a B-, and it's because he shreds apart red enemies, especially when you get to Elemental Duelist, and Elemental Duelist, massive damage against red, spammable, and great in four-star stages, honestly. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, four-star stages are Stories of Legend, and the fourth, uh, eventually when you beat that same chapter three times, the fourth time you only have specials and rares you could bring in, and he is a rare. And he is very good against short-range red enemies. So boars, rhinos, he does a great job against them. So bring him in against those one horns and bring him in against those boars and you will be good. Even seals, piggies, everything. So bring him in. Elemental Duelist probably gets a B plus if you're early game. But overall, since the other forms aren't as good, I'll round it down to a B. Need some water. Next, we have Archer Cat and... Being honest, I forgot to put an F tier on this list, and he would have been one of the few units in the F tier because he is not very good. And he, just like Elemental Duelist, has massive damage against the trait, but Archer Cat is pretty much useless against floating enemies because of low stats, not a ton of range, and unlike Elemental Duelist, low DPS. And what's the point of having low DPS if you have massive damage against a trait? It doesn't do anything. I mean, it's. Jeez. He'd be an F tier. I did not put an F on this list, but I'm gonna do so I'm gonna do Birdcat some service and move him behind the harem because we all know that even Birdcat's better than Archer Cat. Moving on, we have Fortune Teller Cat. Oh, there we go. Fortune Teller Cat. And <clears throat> honestly, I'm gonna give him a D plus. I've never used him. And he used to be one of my favorite rares when I started playing, but that was only because I thought he looked cool. It wasn't because he ever helped me in a stage. And, you know, if you guys agree or disagree with any of these rankings, leave those thoughts down below in the comment section. But I have a hard time finding a usage for Fortune Teller Cat. So I'll leave him at a D plus. We'll give him like a 68 or something like that. And next we have the regular cat who... I know you guys are probably going to laugh at me if you're not far into the game, but we'll give like a, a B plus. And Cat is a great meat shield. Costs 75 cents and really low stats, you guys are probably saying. But at the same time, you got to realize that it's very spammable and it's a meat shield and it protects your bag liners. And this is something I didn't learn until my fourth go at the Battle Cat. So this is why I'm telling you guys. It might sound like I'm being condescending, but... It took me my fourth account to realize what a meat shield was. I thought that they were horrible units, and that's why I never beat Bun Bun, because I never meat shielded, because I thought that meat shields were just horrible units that didn't afford to be bought, you know, didn't deserve to be bought. And I'm only telling you guys that because as a Battlecast player, that's what I experienced. I did not know what a meat shield was, and it took me years to learn. So please don't see how low his stats are and ridicule him for it. He's a great meat shield and use him to protect your valuable units. Right here, you just get it for logging in for 28 days straight. And yeah, you're never going to use them. Tricycle Cat, garbage, F tier. Moving on. Dom Cat is like a C minus, but you have to look at the true form and eventually you'll get it. And that true form is Dark Laser. And Dark Laser is a great unit against red and black enemies. 
strong, so 1.5 times damage and only takes half of it herself. And that's huge, you know, spammable talents and prove that shock waves with the talents and talents if you didn't know np eventually you could start exchanging extra cat extra uh power-ups for np and that np could help you buy talents which boost units so keep that in mind so domcat goes from like a c minus to i would say a b plus pretty quickly especially in early game and even in uncanny legends i still find myself using her once in a while so keep that in mind Next, we have Samurai Cat, who is, yeah, D tier, really weak stats, doesn't really have a niche, and even if it's, even if it's true form with the chance to weaken with fast attacks, still doesn't really do anything because it gets killed. And it's not reliable, it's only a 10% chance. So, yeah, really useless, it's a shame, because there aren't many weakeners. Besides Thaumaturge, which isn't on this list, but Thaumaturge is good at weakening, and I would recommend you rolling for that. It's a rare cat. Next, we have Skirt Cat in, you know, not not the worst unit here, but yeah, probably gonna be a D plus. I wouldn't use it. I don't even think I bought it yet. So, yeah, I never bought it. It's a weaker version of Gross Cat, and you really don't need it. Now, you know who's not a D plus? This guy right here. And first form and second form are A's. If you want to bump it up to an S, just get Can Can, and Can Can is great. Talent Can Can, get Can Can up as much as possible. Roll it extra times so you can get, give it the extra levels, and easy S tier. But these rankings right now, I'm really just going off of um, the first forms because this is an early list. You know, this is starting units. I don't have Can Can. I have Hip Hop Cat up here, and yeah, Hip uh, Hip Hop Cat and Bahamut for my veteran fans who are watching obviously they're s tiers they're not a tiers when you get the true forms but pre-true form that's what we're looking at right now very powerful single target attack pretty quick recharge speed and it only costs 675 cents and it hits like a truck when you get it up enough yeah you will see soon just listen to anybody talk about how good he is and you yourself will be buying those levels farming xp Getting calf fruit, doing whatever it takes to get its true form because it will save your butt. I'll stop ranting about him and I'll move on because there are 44 units and sets to be ranked in this video, so I don't want it to take too long. Next, we have Boogie Cat, who is the first form of Samba. And Boogie Cat, I'll give, let's see, um, where did I put it? Boogie Cat? Yeah, a B minus. And his true form is Gato Amigo, and it's a meat shield that you could use in four-star stages especially. And, uh, you know, pretty decent. It eventually gets outclassed by Crazed and Manic and whatever, but before you get all those or four-star stages, could be useful. You know, does its job, gets a B-. minus. It's not great, but it's definitely not a bad unit. Some people think it's god-awful. Some people think it's great. I think it does its job. I think it's decent. And, you know, fills in a void in a four-star world. Moving on from that, we have Apple Cat. And Apple Cat is going to, once again, B tier. But that obviously changes probably to an S tier. Or not an S tier, probably an A tier when you get the true form. So make sure you get the true form. Once again, you can see I purposefully picked out the first forms of all these units to put on the display for the tier list and that's because i'm talking about the first forms but when you get the true forms of these units they obviously become better apple cat does suffer from single target in this first form but has a good chance to freeze red enemies you stack enough of them and it could perma freeze so that is really good oh wait i put apple cat there so man that's the only unit i put the true form for but you know Ah, you guys got it. I'm I'm sorry, I'm out of it today. But let's see what else we have on this list. A lot of stuff. All right, Pogo Cat before True Form is. Did I just take something off? Oh, we'll find out soon. No, I didn't. All right. Pogo Cat is 
going to go in B tier. True form is probably an A tier. Jiangxi is very good. But Pogo Cat in B tier, good meat shield, you know, good attack power. And yeah, I would recommend it. Uh, keep the pace going. B plus here we have Pirate Cat. Pirate Cat does a great job knocking back red enemies. <clears throat> red enemies, especially in four star stages. And very good unit for crowd control. You spam them, they could perma knock back red into the base, and you could attack the base and win. So recommend that. And it comes a bit better with its true form, which I would also recommend. So yeah, good unit right there. And my first banner is going to be the Dynamites. It's a banner I recommend to beginning players because you have good units like, let's see, we have Balrog in it. We have other units like Nurse that aren't bad. You have Ice Cat, not bad. So there's a lot of good units that I'm probably forgetting right now off the top of my head. Somehow, I know this is stacked. You have Lasbos in it. You have Baby Cats, which its true form is very good. So I would recommend you to roll dynamites it is inconsistent you could end up with some really good or really bad units or something in between so <clears throat> be careful i give the whole set a b ranking because of its inconsistency but there are some gems inside of this uber set so save your rare tickets and cat food and roll away i'd also recommend beginning players to not spend 1500 cat food on a non-guaranteed draw either wait till it's guaranteed roll in at 750 or roll one to 750 with a guarantee. That's my advice for 11 draws. But I already covered all the gotcha events. So I'll only cover a few in this video. King Dragon. Well, really this is Dragon. I don't know why I got King Dragon here. It's a B tier. 400 range. Stackable. And you could beat Bun Bun with Dragon Cats and Meat Shields. If you had to. It's a strat. It's called Dragon Stack. But anyways very good at killing middle you know medium strength enemies and peons good at crowd control but be aware of shock waves be aware of rushers and stuff those might reach into it and kill it but decent stats so i give it a b <clears throat> next we have our boy right here and yeah if you're in a beginner and if you're a beginner you're probably wondering Sparring cat, why the heck are you putting that 150 cent fat cat over Bahamut cat and can can? And <clears throat> you guys will thank me for this ranking later because this is the second best meat show in the game, only behind the mana counterpart. And make sure to have this guy can cat up. He's not just a no some random guy I'm putting up in the S tier. He is a fantastic meat shield and he will do a great job guarding your fantastic units that you hopefully. And hopefully and luckily get so easy s tier right there s s tier when you get the true form and keep that in mind all right jurassic cat jurassic cat i always trashed on him but i think he's a b plus because his procs are very good his true form only helps that out he's spammable and he can make quick work of metal enemies which really only die under critical hits unless if they're weak so you need a critical hitter like him he'll do a great job and dynamites which i had ranked just recently also has marauder cat and you stack those two together and it's a very deadly for metal combination so if you're looking for some anti-metal units i definitely recommend you starting off with catasaurs or jurassic cat or jurassic cat sitter whatever you know him by but i would recommend you upgrading him and making him a part of your lineup and also i'd like to apologize for how confuzzled i have been in this video this is my first time making a youtube video a long form video in over a month so i'm just starting to get back into it and apologize for the pause i've been doing youtube shorts and grinding through the end of the school year all right next we have kung fu cat and you know, I love this guy. I really just upgraded him as much as I could and tried to make him as good as I could. But he's just not as good as I wished. I'll give him like an 80. He just barely gets to a B-. And he's powerful enough early game to help you win some stages. But later, his short range definitely comes back to bite him. He only has one knockback. He doesn't have a lot of health. And although he has decent DPS, his 
survivability does not make him worth his price. So B minus, he's probably like a B or a B plus early game because he could be one of your mains. But eventually as you get Ubers or you upgrade Bahamut enough, he will fall off a bit. Still sometimes usable in four star stages or restriction stages. Or even if you want to just throw him in because you like Dancer Cat and how he looks like Michael Jackson. But, you know, it's also 240 cat food. So think a little bit before you buy it. And if you really need him or really like him, go for it. He's not that bad. But I would not be revolving a lineup around him. Next, we have Kotatsu Cat here. And do you remember how before I was talking about how Shockwave could ruin some of your long range units' days? Well, don't worry, because you have Kotatsu Cat, and although Kotatsu isn't a wave blocker, his true form is, and he's definitely one of the first ones that you should get, because there are a lot of enemies that produce shockwaves, and they could be detrimental to one's, you know, progress through a stage or chapter or whatever, so make sure to get him, and Cory's won't be a problem. All of these really big bad units won't be so scary anymore, so bring Kotatsu up to an S tier. You know what, maybe an A tier, yeah. The first couple forms are still really good against floating. So with the last one, they're both good at tanking against floating and weakening them. So they're good for defense, good for crowd control, but even more known for their wave blocker ability. And it's one of the reasons why wave blockers are becoming more and more power creeped by the minute. Next, we have Ultra Souls. Which is another event I recommend for y'all to roll. It has Castle Jizzo in it, who is very well known across the Battlecast community. Very good against angels and black enemies. And <clears throat> Ultra Souls is going to go a bit above Dynamites because of those units, including Castle Jizzo. There are some really bad ones in this set, but if you can get your hands on a few of them in here, then you'll be better off. And it tends to be a bit more consistent than the Dynamites. Most sets also consist units that are strong against different traits. So make sure to do your research and decide what you individually need on your account. So if you need more alien, I would go for something like Elemental Pixies, more Angels, Dark Heroes, or Ultra Souls. So you can see there's specific traits aligned with specific events. So make sure to know what you need and know what you already have enough of. Next we have Maneko. Who's got a D tier, but, you know, if you need a critical hitter early in the game, she might get you by, but really after you finish Empire of Cats or maybe the first chapter of Into the Future, she has pretty much no usage. And I've sparred with people over this a little bit. They think Maneko's critical hits better than I think, and, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but I think, personally, Maneko is one of the most useless units you get in the game. And... Crazy Maneko isn't much better. And yeah, Maneko weak stats, so even if it lands a critical hit with her extremely long recharge, then not very good. I will give people swack though. She costs, what does she cost? 149 So pretty inexpensive. Actually, really inexpensive. That's good. But the recharge speed is long. The stats are low. And even if she lands a, a critical hit at a 15% rate, then doesn't do a whole lot to many enemies so d tier not as bad as most of them so i'll give her a d plus mister is going to rank just next to her you know mister doesn't have a whole lot of usage where i put mister mister where are you there's mister and yeah mister Oh my god, did I put Bishop Cat in D tier? Alright, Mr. sucks, but Bishop Cat is right up here. True form is Sanzo, great at floating, and yeah, I'm going to give Sanzo an A. I, I apologize to any Battlecats fan that saw that. I had no clue what happened. Sanzo is an A. Uh, it must have been a misclick at some point, but great crowd controller against floating enemies, so make sure to have him equipped in your decks. And I still use him, and he's the reason that I was able to beat Eldritch Forces and advance to Uncanny Legends. So, by all means, get him as a true form. One of the greatest anti-floating crowd controllers in the game. Even though it's rare, it's cheap, 
it's spammable and it's a great thing to have so geez i offend if i offended anybody my bad mr sucks right there he really has no usage you can probably just drop him down here honestly and nothing's gonna happen and zombie cat really bad stats but an exception i'm gonna give zombie cat a b because zombie cat is part of the cat combo biohazard which is one of the best in the game so a cat combo for those who don't know is in the first five units in your deck if you have them in you know if you have a, cer a certain few units in your deck it gives you a certain stat boost and cat combos are at the bottom center of your equip screen so check that out if you'd like to get some bonuses for all of your stats in the game you know for the stage or you know increased money whatever so cat cat combos will increase and improve the stats and ability of your units in the game so keep that in mind so biohazard will get them up to an 80 or whatever unit sucks but the cat combo is really good and we can't just ignore that right here we have sushi cat which turn into row cat and yeah you're gonna b plus actually no against for what it does a tier really 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 good at tanking red enemies and you pair that with a spammable attacker like elemental duelist which you talk about uh apple cat you know you, you pretty much have reds on lock you're also going to want some anti-red ubers as well but but those three units i just listed are definitely a great start for you to reach towards in terms of anti-red fighting <clears throat> sushi cat is very very good against red so keep that in mind especially as you fight units like neandum or even further into the game boars and red horns and whatever the you know whatever might come across your way jk bun anything like that just pretty much any red enemy he's great against Corys. but yeah keep that in mind sumo cat now honestly people really like sumo cat but he was never really useful for me i'm personally going to give him a b minus because i do recognize why people like him but i don't think he's one of the better meat shows in the game you know four star stage is fine but you know he costs 300 and he's spamble and you start running into money problems and tight stages and i still feel like he gets one shot by a lot of bosses so i really think that tank cat for the price and in general is better even cheap meat shields like samba or macho you know they're 75 cents to the throwaways but for 300 cents you expect a little bit more so yeah also part of cool japan which is a great cat combo so i recognize that as well i'm gonna give sumo like a b minus not a bad unit but gets out class later in the game paris cat i think paris gets a little overrated i'm gonna give paris a b tier because paris very similarly to sumo cat not a bad unit but the 900 cost for her and the fact that her recharge is about every three seconds means that pretty much all of your income is going to go to her and there's a lot of stages where you're not able to stack her and you just keep buying one and sending one out and it dies and it's not good so you want to be cautious with her there's some stages that she absolutely does work on especially with short range bosses and she does a ton of damage but keep in mind that you're going to be spending about 300 cents per second on her so if you don't have that type of money in the stage don't bring her if it's a very tight stage with a little drop money don't bring her because chances are all of your money's going to go towards her and she's going to do no damage and she's going to do nothing so keep that in mind b tier because she works in some stages extremely well but you know inconsistent sometimes right here we have the first form of Butter, we have butterfly cat right here which is the first form of fishman cat which you guys may have heard of and <clears throat> very good against floating enemies massive damage and good for speed running too which is always nice good for rush damage i'm gonna give um well where did i put it there we go i'm gonna give it a solid b plus not quite an a tier but you know against its niche is probably an a tier and once i you know as i said very great rush damage against floating 
does its job well, but the problem is sometimes it can't get enough attacks off. It gets one off and it dies, and you can't keep sending one out for one shot because you're probably not going to get your money back. But this goes like an 89 on my grading scale, like an 88 or an 89. Very good unit, but single target attack, a good period of time in between attacks, and, you know, could get tossed around. But it does have a rebound mechanism where every time it gets knocked back at attacks, which is nice, similarly to Awaken Mahana Cat and some other units. But it doesn't have a lot of health, so ideally, you don't want it getting hit. B+. Plus. Cats in a box. Used to be one of my favorite units as well, but it evidently becomes weaker throughout the game. And geez, I should just move Cat Gunslinger up. I don't know why it's in C. Taking account into the and taking account into the true form is definitely a B. Because the first two forms aren't that good, but the third form is great. So I'll give that like a B plus. I would just revise that. I don't know why that was in C tier. Technical difficulties, or maybe I was just. You know, not thinking clearly, but yeah, cats in a box are going to be like a C minus. And after Empire of Cats and stuff, they're pretty much irrelevant, even if they're true form. But, you know, through Empire of Cats, they're probably like a C plus or B minus because they do help a lot. They have speed and you could use them like a cow cat with more damage. So that's always nice, but definitely falls off after early mid game. Ninja Cat, very similar to Box Cat, because when you first get Ninja Cat, Ninja Cat's supposed to be the superior version of Dark Cat or Axe Cat, which Axe Cat is glorified for like the first nine stages of the game, but Ninja Cat automatically replaces him, becomes great, it's a good successor to him, but same syndrome as uh, same syndrome as Box as Cats in a Box, falls off extremely quickly. Because eventually the stats just don't keep up with the competitiveness of the game. And probably by the time you get into early, <clears throat> I don't know, into the future, not very good. So keep that in mind. It gets like a 70 on my ranking scale. Right here, we have Nerd Cat. And those who have known the game a long time obviously know that this is Cyberpunk Cat's first form. But for those who don't know, Cyberpunk and Hacker cyberpunk the true form is a good crowd control with slow could sit all the way back sniped i think it has the longest standing range in the game or one of them i think the longest but great unit for some situations not great in others you know you don't want to be putting them up against bun buns or whatever unless if you have fantastic front line defense because huge blind spot and for those who don't know what a blind spot is it's the area where a unit can't attack you know, it's a unit where if a unit has certain range abilities, that there will be an area where the unit cannot hit the enemy because it's in the blind spot. So keep him far back, keep him outside of enemy reach, and he's great. I'm going to give him a B plus, uh, counting his true form. I think there are weaknesses with that blind spot and not a lot of attack power, not a lot of survivability in terms of health, but if you protect it properly, then you'll be doing well because you could eventually stack them and the weaken is really nice so i'll keep that b plus almighty's right here arguably the best set that isn't an uber fest or anything or exclusive i'm gonna give it an a because there are very few bad ubers in the set and there are many good ubers in the set so this gets uh almighty zeus gets an a tier yeah the likes of aphrodite Amaterasu, Kronos, Zeus, even, or I consider good units. You have uh, Gashana, who is the legend if you're lucky enough to get her. Or him, I think him. Yeah, but that's five pretty good units off the bat. Some of them are great that I just mentioned. Some Zeus is alright, but it's one of the most consistent sets in the game. And it definitely sets the tone for other events in the Battlecats. Valkyrie, I'm going to give Valkyrie a C plus because early, you know, between when you get her in, at the end of Chapter 2, Empire of Cats, and Bun Bun, you're going to use her a lot. She's probably going to be one of your best units, and during that time, she's invaluable. But as soon as you get Bahamut Cat, you really just stop using her, and 
she she's occasionally good in some uh, four crown four star stages, but nine times out of ten she gets outclassed by the enemies she fights, and her usage spikes. But I will keep her up in a C plus because I recognize that if you are stuck on Bun Bun right now, that she's probably one of your main carries. So just during that one small time in the game, I think she provides a ton of usage. So I think I'll leave her up. I think that was what Ponos was intending to do. Give you something that you could use to beat Bun Bun and then you move on in life. So C plus outside of that realm though, she's like a C minus, you know, not great. She gets outclassed by many Ubers, but you won't have many Ubers when you get her. And another, and the last non fest event that I recommend you to roll are the Dark Heroes, where you have some pretty good units like, uh, let's see, we have Catman, you have Warlock and Pierre, you have that cat girl that shoots, uh, what's her name? Um, the lady, the lady, the. Well, the the woman with the cat ears who has the guns in her hand. Well, I forgot her name, but you know this is a good set. I'll give it a B plus, and you're gonna want to you're gonna want to get your hands on it because it's very consistent and it has a diverse amount of traits that are covered. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, let's see, what's his name? The Yuki Moore. He's also in the set. So you're, that's at least uh that's. Oh, wait, no, Yuki Moore's not in this set. Never mind, he's in Warriors. Jeez, no, War Gods. I'm off today. But this set has at least three good Ubers, I would consider. Even more that are off the top. I just can't name off the top of my head. But, you know, good set. I recommend it for beginners. Titan Cat is going to get a C+. Plus. Definitely loses usage after Empire of Cats. It's probably like a B plus in Empire of Cats and... Probably like a B minus and in, in into the future, but after that, I give it like a straight C. It falls off, but it has melee with high DPS, good health, but only one knockback. And as soon as you see his knockback, it's pretty sad because you know he's dead. But also costs 1950 cents, so keep that in mind. Not exactly cheap. Also, no trait, only a chance for a knockback in its true form, so keep that in mind. Sometimes the knockback is counterproductive, so you might have to toggle it between forms. But unlike the other normals, you're not going to lose two times. You're not going to lose two times the stats. You're only going to lose half the stats, which is nice. I guess you're only going to lose 50%, not 100. All right, a few more. We have this hammer cat right here. Ah, Viking cat. Give it a C plus. Does his job against Red sometimes, but definitely gets outclassed by El by Elemental Duelist, Can Can, and pretty a lot of other Red attackers. It's just not as competitive as them in a competitive market. It doesn't make him bad. There are some situations in four star stages where he's useful, but he's outclassed. And I think Red is one of the most power creep traits in the game. So keep that in mind. Axe Cat, the man that we were speaking of before, is a D tier. He gets replaced by a unit who's still bad, and Axe Cat gets clowned on, and he's regarded as the worst in this normal pool of units, even behind Bird Cat. And last but not least, you see this big hurly burly lifter right here. While it's not just fake muscle, it's very strong as black enemies, and in its true form, Pizza Cat, fantastic against them. So I'm going to say that's going to probably give grant it an A- minus or so. Really powerful against them. And, you know, maybe even A once you get the talents because of the shockwave abilities and everything. But, yeah, thinking down the line, great unit. Even now, I think just about every player uses it. And if you don't use it, you probably have Casa Gizzo. Or you do what I do and you use Casa Gizzo and Pizza Cat in the same lineup. But here's 44 cats and events. That every beginning player should know about. It will be some of their first units. And hopefully some of the last ones they ever use. S tier we only we have him. But we have our lovely tank cap. But obviously the, most of these units become S tiers. Once you get their true forms later in the game. So keep that in mind. They're not just A tiers for the whole game. You have to get their true forms for them to move up. B tiers are pretty good. Um, some of them though are more specific to the time zone. 
For example, Kung Fu Cat is not in the same tier as Paris Cat in, I don't know, in Uncanny Legends. Not the same ranking, obviously. These change, but, you know, you know, I'm part of this move Kung Fu Cat down to a C, so I don't confuse guys. <clears throat> and then C tier, you have Meh. These are units that peaked early in the game and get outclassed sharply. You know, they sharply lose their value. They lose it overnight, and as soon as you get another unit, they're replaced. And D tier are usually never good to begin with. They might have had a few stages to shine on. They might be good every once in a blue moon, but they're not consistent, and they're not to be relied on. This is my list. I am glad to be back on YouTube speaking with you guys and not just posting shorts. But if you guys enjoy the shorts, let me know. If you want me to make more videos like this, definitely let me know. And if you've learned anything at all or enjoyed this video or just like the sound of my voice or something, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn notifications on because it helps grow our channel and it helps us bring good Battlecast content abroad to the Battlecast community. Sparring Cat signing off, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.